we need to talk about people saying that this Yu-Gi-Oh format is healthy because to be honest, it's really not. Let's dive on into it, shall we? Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it is your host with the most Avril R32 here and destroy the ever-living boo-boo stain of that like and subscribe button as well as that ding-dong notification bell so we can keep on climbing even higher the 1200 ladder. Currently sitting at 1277 subscribers. I really appreciate all of the support. This channel is getting a glow up, ladies and gentlemen. We're growing like a little baby in the womb or whatever. I don't know. <laughs> Guys, thank you so much for tuning into this video. Hope you're having a fantastic day. I want to talk about Yu-Gi-Oh! apparently being in a healthy format because, um, I, I don't see it. Uh, last time I understood healthy, healthy is usually like, you know, you want low carb, you lose losing weight, you get into some new clothes. <laughs> but all jokes aside, I've been seeing a lot of people on YouTube and elsewhere talking about how Yu-Gi-Oh is in a very diverse format, which I will agree with on that point. Yu-Gi-Oh is in a very healthy format and all these sort of things. And to a degree, I agree, right? But the biggest issue with this format is not necessarily the diversity or the number of decks that are playable right now. It's the fact that the format is more dry than my humor. I mean, it's more stale than stale chips at like your local Mexican restaurant. Like it's, it's horrible. <laughs> and really the biggest issues that I feel come down to this format. I was discussing this with a buddy of mine like last week is Cash Tira in general, uh, Eradicator Epidemic Virus, King Calamity, and like anything else that people are tired of, like besides like hand traps and shit like that. Like pe I've seen people say like drone lock bird needs to be banned. And I'm just like, dude, hand traps inherently balance Yu-Gi-Oh. Like if we didn't have hand traps in 2023, like how we really didn't have any back and say like Edison format. Oh my God. Could you imagine if like there wasn't any D shifter droll ash, you name it. And like dark world had their new support and they just start taking a dump all over the board with their combos. Like, no, I, I would rather go and play Pokemon at that point. I'd rather go watch paint dry. Like it's absolutely toxic. But I was talking to my buddy last week and I mentioned these things and he's like, nah, dude, like King Calamity is balanced because it's a YouTube combo. Like they're not even, the Synchron decks aren't even playing that combo anymore. Cash Tira is inherently balanced because a lot of decks are playing six books now, that being three book of moon, three book of eclipse. And then he's like, Eradicator, I'll give you that. <laughs> and I'm just like, even, so uh, here's what people mean by YouTube combos. Let's kind of backtrack here a little bit. YouTube combo, for those of you who don't know, basically means like, it looks flashy and cool on YouTube, but if you try it IRL, it sucks a pile of monkey nuts. <laughs> and I agree to an extent, but the issue is, is that it, it inherently exists within the confines of the game. You know, it's kind of similar to like what was happening with Super Heavy Samurai, where you could use Cyber Sign in the deck and you could pull off an FTK. There were people even with that combo saying, oh, that's just a YouTube combo. Like the best way to play the deck is without Cyberstein, which a lot of people agreed. And that's why we saw majority of success, some Cyberstein combos, but it was mostly just the straight super heavy samurai 40 card monster builds of super heavy. What did Konami do? They still banned the Scarecrow Link and they still banned Cyberstein. So it's like, <laughs> does that just mean they don't ban it because it's a YouTube combo? No, absolutely not. And especially like ever since... Uh, that post from Jeff Jones or whoever it was on Twitter talking about that stockholder meeting with Konami in Japan where they're trying to do what they can on the ban list to get new players into the game. Do you think that little Timmy No Thumbs that like is bringing his like little summon skull beatdown deck, whatever the fuck to your locals, like wants to get hit with a King Calamity at like table 35 at your locals, like the low end tables? Like, no, they're never going to come back. Like, even if it's not that consistent, even if it's not that good, the fact that there are players who are probably experiencing this, whether it's on EDO Pro, Master Shits, whatever, like it doesn't matter the platform. The fact that it exists is an issue and it needs to be taken care of, especially too with the Jack Atlas structure deck reprinting King Calamity. Maybe they won't hit King Calamity now, but they'll definitely have to hit it at some point, even if it's not on this ban list, you know, maybe a ban list down the line in the future especially because of the fact that Synchron, even though it's not the combo they're playing, the fact that they have access to it, Manadium has access to it. Like there are bigger issues in the format, but that is something that at least needs to be considered as an issue. Eradicator Omnis, obviously just being the bitch of a card that it is. Like if you think about it, right? Ever since Red Reboot got banned, 
there is inherently no way to stop a trap card from resolving if you go second. Like seriously, like like think about it. If you go up against Labyrinth and they go first and they let's say that they just, they break, they step five back, run pass. You draw for turn. Now all their traps are live. You inherently have no way to, get the hell out of here, Dust. <laughs> you inherently have no way to respond to the Labyrinth player's trap cards because one, you haven't built a board yet. And two, you have to be able to commit enough cards to your board to put out, say, like a Baron or some kind of Omni Negate. Like, even if you're playing Cash Tira, arguably, well, actually, I would definitely say the best deck in the room, you have to commit multiple cards to the field to establish some kind of negate. Fenrir is a interruption. Unicorn hits a card out of the extra deck. Ogre can hit a card off the top of the deck, but that's like, who cares? Um, Rizeheart can banish the top three of the deck, but like, that's not really solving the issue of hitting something like Eradicator. You know, when we had Red Reboot at one, granted it was Saki, don't get me wrong, and it should be banned, but we at least had a way where you could main deck it or side deck it, and if you top decked it for turn and the opponent hits you with like an anti-spell, you could Red Reboot them, or like in this case, Eradicator. Because even though people are like, just draw the out, it's like, what out are you going to draw, Sugar Boo Bear? Like, real talk, like, go touch grass. <laughs> like, unless it's something like Anti-Spell or some kind of Continuous Trap, Imperial Order, when that was legal, like, you could rip the Twin Twister, you could rip the Cosmic, the MST, whatever, and you had the out. But it's like, with the Eradicator, what out do you have? Like, they're going to hit you with it in the draw phase. So, like, you don't have anything. And it inherently becomes a card that there's no way to actually stop the card from resolving, which is bonkers, especially when we're in a game of Yu-Gi-Oh! now where you have cards like Trap Tracks and also Trap Trick that can get out a normal trap. And it's like, it doesn't matter that Trap Trick says you can't activate any other traps for the rest of the turn except that one trap, or you can only activate one more trap for the rest of the turn because you've already won the ball game anyway because you activated a damn Eradicator. And then, like I was saying with the point with Cash Tira, it's like, look, Cash Tira is absolutely insane. A walking, talking macro, you can kiss my ass proper. Ban a Rise Heart, ban Fenrir, or put it to one. And, like, I think you're honestly good at that point. But even then, like, Rise Heart, like, I get that banishing the top three of the opponent's deck face down is meant to trigger Shangri Era and lock out a zone and things like that, which can then trigger the pressure plan to pop a card. But it's like, why does it have to randomly do that? And with my dog water luck in this game, you know what I usually get hit off the top of my deck with Rise Heart? Like, three cards that are either the same or like three of one of each different card so now i'm playing with like two copies of each or like if i wasn't playing three then it's like one copy of each or they're just gone for the game and it's like it's i know that that's variance but that's so toxic it just needs to go like that's why i say that even to this day cards like medora keldeo kelbeck and aigido just need to be banned because even though they're all at one the fact that when you hit an aigido and a kelbeck together in tier and you're milling 10 cards off your opponent's deck like how does the opponent win at that point unless like they just get lucky and hit 10 cards off the top of their off the top of their deck that they didn't care about losing or like if they have a lily to get a quick play out of their graveyard like to me it just those cards just need to go it just uh, they are the most toxic of toxic mill cards that just need to go. Medora and Keldeo by extension just cuz they're all in the same food group so to speak. They're all in the same family. You know, this format is incredibly stale. It is diverse. Don't get me wrong. There are, I would say, oh God, like at least 20, maybe 25, if you really want to push it, decks that are viable that you could play like from the locals all the way up to like a YCS level, depending on what you're playing. Um, and that is a good thing. But to say that like, oh, this format's healthy you're really, really stretching yourself thin there, Sugar Boo Bear. And I, I think that I think that we've seen a lot more healthier formats in the past. Now, I'm sure some people are going to say, well, Avery, what is it that you consider a healthy and diverse format? Like, what would be the perfect format? And honestly, make the hits that I mentioned in this video to Cash Tira, ban the cards that I've said need to be banned, maybe hit the buy steals a little bit because those are just going to become more and more of an issue down the line. And like, you're good. Until we hit Age of Overlord and then we get more power creep. We get that Photon Nemesis thing. We get SP Little Knight. Age of Overlord's an amazing set. You you need to get your case like five minutes ago. Side note. Uh, like, yeah, that, that, that set's going to be good. If Power of the Elements is like a level 10 in terms of how good. Age of Overlord's is a, like a six or a seven. But pre-Age of Overlord, hit those cards I've mentioned throughout this video. And like, format's healthy. <laughs> format's good. Because then you can still use Cash Tier as like a sub-engine for other stuff. Which is fine. Like, there's... There's nothing wrong with decks that have been hit in the past. 
i.e. Zodiac, and putting them as a sub-engine into another deck that makes them still competitively viable in that sense. And I think that that's a very good thing. It keeps a deck alive in some sense of the word after it's been hit on a ban list. So that would just be how, you know, I would think that the format's healthy. But once we get a ban list, I think things will finally kind of ramp back up. It's just, it's so boring as hell right now. Like if you're not playing Cash Tira, you're just, I feel like playing something to beat Cash Tira or cards to beat Cash Tira, i.e. the books. It's just that the books are so good because they double up against things like purely you can book a moon, one of the purely monsters flipping face down. They don't get their exceed, all that good stuff. You know, the, the format's solved. You know, it's like a Rubik's Cube. Every new format's like a Rubik's Cube. Once it's been solved, you just move on with your day and just maybe opt in a couple different tech cards here and there. So guys, let me know what you think down in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.